In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, today the church rejoices as it celebrates the nativity of St. John the Baptist. And we in Guam very much celebrate this feast as Saint Juan, a traditional feast for each and every one of us. But today the Lord is inviting us to focus more on the spiritual part of the feast of the nativity, the birth of St. John the Baptist, which is so inspiring. I think we all should go and sit with our Bibles today and read the episode of the birth of John the Baptist, which is so touching. God intervening in the lives of people, choosing men and women to proclaim his word, making them prophets to stand for justice, to stand for peace, to bring people close to them. I think this is more that brings out the meaning of today's feast. I think the Lord wants us to realize the true meaning of this feast. We all, like St. John the Baptist, should be prophetic in our lives. It's very important to stand for justice, to speak the truth. It is not easy. Many a times in our day-to-day -day lives, be it at home, be it in our workplaces, in schools, in colleges, and elsewhere, we have compromised on truth. John the Baptist always stood for the truth because he was a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit right from his birth when he was formed in his mother's womb. For the times that we have failed to stand for truth, for the times that we have compromised on saying what is right and proclaiming Lord Jesus in our words and deeds, let us ask mercy and pardon from the Lord. Asking the Lord grace and strength to testify for him, let us say together, I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my faults, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. for all
Dear brothers and sisters, place before the Lord all your prayers, all your petitions. Place them before the altar. The Lord is present and is listening to all your needs, to all your prayers and petitions. Let us pray, O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Let your response be, From my mother's womb you have been my help. From my, my mother's, mother's womb, womb you have been, been my help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Pay heed to me and save me. From my mother's, mother's womb, womb you have been, been my help. help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. From, from my mother's, mother's womb, womb you have yeah, been my help. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. From my from mother's, mother's womb, womb you, you have, have been, been my mother. help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonder still. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, God raised up David to be the king of our ancestors, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a saviour, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had preached a baptism of repentance 
to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but after me one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you that fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father, but his mother said, Not so, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And they all marveled, and immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea, and all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today the church celebrates the birth, the nativity, the birthday of St. John the Baptist. And in Goa, this is quite a traditional feast for every one of us. St. Jean, we know how it is celebrated with pomp and joy. But I think today the Lord wants us more to focus on the spiritual part of it. In all our celebrations, we need to have Jesus placed at the center of every celebration, the spiritual part of it has to be taken care of first. Once we have the spiritual part taken care of, then follows all the rest. Therefore, the Lord says, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and rest all other things will be given unto thee. Without Jesus, without spiritual preparations, all our celebrations, everything else will go haywire. Everything else will be meaningless. Therefore, St. Augustine would say, Love and do as thou wilt. Because when we love, we cannot do anything wrong. Therefore, when we focus on the spiritual part of the celebration, when we focus on Jesus, we will always be celebrating the right way. I think that's the word of the Lord that is coming to all of us Goans today as we traditionally celebrate San Juan every year. Dear brothers and sisters, looking at the readings of today, very powerful readings. The first reading taken from the book of Isaiah, where the Lord says, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. This wor these words are foreshadowing the life of Saint John the Baptist. I think today we all need to sit with the Bibles and read the account of the birth of Saint John the Baptist. He was a person who was chosen right from the time he was conceived in his mother's womb. Saint John the Baptist stands in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He has got one. He has got one of his a leg, his feet in the Old Testament and the other in the New Testament. He is the last prophet of the Old Testament and the first prophet of the New Testament. He is the predecessor, he comes as a precursor to the Lord who prepares the way of Jesus. And the first reading speaks about him. It says that he has chosen me right from my mother's womb. We have all said the response. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. I think today the Lord wants to remind us of the words spoken to us in Jeremiah 29, 11, where the Lord says, I have a plan for each and every one of you. Then in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, where he says to Jeremiah, Even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. I have chosen you. I have appointed you. I have called you. We should never forget these words, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord has a plan for each and every one of us. Today the Lord is reminding us through the birth and story of St. John the Baptist as we celebrate the feast of his nativity, where the Lord is saying, I have chosen you. God had chosen St. John the Baptist even before he was conceived in his mother's womb. And therefore when Mother Mary visited Elizabeth, Mother Mary filled with the Holy Spirit, when she visited Elizabeth, the, bo the boy, the child, St. John the Baptist, was in the womb of his mother Elizabeth, leaped for joy. Because in the womb of Mary was going to be Jesus, and in the womb of Elizabeth was John the Baptist. Such connections, dear brothers and sisters, such subtle connections, the fine tunings of the Spirit takes place only when we are very docile to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to work in us. The Lord will unravel, will manifest many things to us when we are docile to the Holy Spirit. And therefore, in the last line of the Gospel we have today, and the child grew and became strong in the Spirit. And he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel was revealed. The Lord wants to manifest things to us. He wants us to be his friends. St. John the Baptist was a friend of Jesus, a very close friend of Jesus. Are we docile to the Holy Spirit? Do we leap when the Holy Spirit is coming on us? I think we all go and should ask this to ourselves. We all leap in the wells. We all jump in the wells on this day and celebrate. I think before doing that, we should be people filled with the Holy Spirit. We should leap by the power of the Holy Spirit. We should be jumping, exulting and rejoicing like St. John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us remember this, brothers and sisters, that we are all chosen and are in the plan of God. Nobody is excluded from the plan of God. This is one of the things that the Lord wants to remind us today on the feast day of St. John the Baptist. Secondly, when we look at the first reading, it speaks very strongly about 
how Isaiah was chosen to stand for truth, to speak what is true. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, St. John the Baptist also stood for the truth in his life. He confronted Herod. He spoke the truth. He did not stay back. I think in our lives, be it at home, be it in our workplaces, in the society, wherever we are, there are ample occasions where we tend to compromise. We need to stand for the truth. And the truth sets us free. Therefore, first we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit manifests things to us. He manifests the truth. And when we stand for the truth, we stand for Christ. Like St. John the Baptist, we become prophetic. That is the second calling that we have today. Speak the truth always. Stand for what is right. Do not compromise. This is the second message, the second calling that we have today in the readings. The Lord is calling us to stand for truth, to stand for justice. In our society, when we go out today, we find a lot of injustice. We find a lot of compromise being made. So many people are being put under feet. Are we ready to stand for all these people? Are we ready to stand to testify and witness to the Lord? Because St. John the Baptist was stood and witnessed for the truth for Jesus. We should be ready to suffer trials, persecutions, because that also was a part of St. John the Baptist's life. He was martyred. In our lives, we too will be martyred many a times. But we should offer all our martyrdoms to Jesus. Yes, in Trees of Avila, I would say, my whole life was one big martyrdom. We need not die as martyrs today like St. John the Baptist. But we can offer our daily martyrdoms to Jesus. And Jesus will never let them go in waste. Today all these martyrs are proclaimed, are exalted, because they laid their life for Jesus. They witness to Jesus. We can witness to Jesus when we offer our daily martyrdoms, our daily persecutions, our daily trials to Jesus at the feet of the cross and say, Lord, I offer all my little martyrdoms, my persecutions, my trials to you. You will not let them go in waste. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, Christian suffering, Christian trials, Christian suffering never goes in waste. We should never allow it to go in waste. When we offer it to the Lord, the Lord makes it redemptive. Christian suffering is therefore redemptive. Let us pray during this Holy Eucharistic celebration on the solemnity of the nativity of St. John the Baptist that we may realize the plan that God has in each and every one of us. Come what may, be where we are. We may be thinking we are far away from God. The Lord is still there waiting for us. If you think you have gone far away from God, ask yourself who has moved. God never moves. He is always there with arms open wide. Come back to Him. He has a plan for each and every one of us and He will never let go of us. He will never leave us. He always wants us to come close to Him. Second, let us realize that we have got to stand for truth. Speak the truth. Stand for justice. Never compromise. And thirdly, dear brothers and sisters, let us strengthen our spiritual life more than doing all other celebrations. The Lord wants us first to seek the kingdom of God and then he says, rest, everything will fall in line. Therefore, let us take this message today and during this Holy Eucharistic celebration, let us pray for ourselves that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit like St. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit right from the time he was conceived in his mother's womb. Let this prayer be ours during this Holy Eucharistic celebration. Let us all rise, and together we profess our faith in the one God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice of mine and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought a great rejoicing. Even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism, and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, O Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, O Lord, all those who are participating from our homes and elsewhere in this most holy Eucharistic celebration, that we may be blessed, that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit and stand for justice and truth, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint John the Baptist, with Saint Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, let us call on our Heavenly Father in the words our Savior gave us, saying, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I live you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, O Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a loving sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Dear brothers and sisters, behold, the Lamb of God, whom St. John the Baptist stood and testified for, saying, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the same Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that, that you, should you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. healed.
Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Mass is ended. Go forth to testify in the joy of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I wish you all a very happy feast of St. John the Baptist, San João. May God bless all of you all and may all our celebrations be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. God bless.